What's going down, man? It's your boy, Danny Houston. Say, man, Slab Karaoke, March 1st, Faces, 5104 Alameda. It's going down. You don't want to miss it. This is the H-Town event of all H-Town events. Slab Karaoke. It's like regular karaoke but with an H-Town twist. You know what I'm saying? You can come out, perform Southside, 25 Lights on My Dresser, Tops Drop, Steel Tipping, Riding Dirty, Back Then, Swinging and Banging, My Mind Playing Tricks on Me. It doesn't matter. Whatever H-Town record, man, is going down. March 1st, Slab Karaoke. I'm hosting it. It's brought to you by Top Shelf Entertainment. Uh, hey, man, come out. It might be some special guests in the building, man. You never know. This is the H-Town event of all H-Town events. I'm telling you. Be there. March 1st. Faces. 5104 Alameda. Slab Karaoke. It's going down. Subscribe to the Danny Houston Podcast, man. What up? This bus down. You are now watching Donny Houston. Yeah, we getting it in. One more time. Nasty. <laughs> Yeah, man, it's going down. It's Donnie Houston Podcast. I am Donnie Houston. Uh, check it out, man. I got my New Orleans co-host in here, man. My big brother, man. DJ yes, Precise. Sir. Precise, yes, what's sir. going yes, down, sir. baby? One more time. We back again. <laughs> oh, I got somebody for you today, uh, Donnie. I got somebody special today, boy. <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> Hey, we, yeah, we, we, we shoot on all day. Like, hey, man, I don't know if we could do it Sunday, but hey, man, uh, <laughs> I got somebody I think we may need to get in there. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, man. Say, man. Like how your boy be in Dallas. Hey, man. Say, <laughs> man. Man, do your thing, man. Hey, this bust down gotta, back in the house, baby. Come on, man. New Orleans legend, building, man. Yeah. Bust down, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah. done got him out of semi-retirement. He trying to disappear on us, but we ain't yeah. going to let that happen. The culture... <laughs> The culture ain't gonna let that happen. You wasn't taking no for an answer. You wasn't taking no for an answer. I ain't gonna let that happen, bro. He gotta. If I'm gonna be outside, everybody gotta <laughs> come on and play. Everybody gotta come on and play. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I'm, I'm, I'm honored to have you, man. You one of those cats, man. One of them names you always heard, but you know, rare, rarely seen. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right. So, to see you here live in the flesh, man, in, in 2023, man, it's a blessing, man. I appreciate you, man. Man, I appreciate you having me, bro. For sure, man. What's new, man? Well, first of all, because I, I told you, I was, I had this part of my intro to say, man, I was going to talk about him used to be having ballys on and all that. And he showed up, had the ballys on his feet, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Still got his ballys yes, on, sir. man. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah. sir. That's how I roll, you know. I got I to represent the brand, so, you know, bust down rock in the house. He got to have his ballys on. Oh, for know? sure, so, for sure. Yeah, there it is. So 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 what's new, man? Uh, you know, you just did the, the Legend of New Orleans, uh, New Orleans Legends concert right. with, with Sice. And right. Well, you know, I got Sice. He, you know, he pulling me out of semi-retirement. You know, I just decided to get back out here, uh, make a little bit of this money, and um, you know, and just just you know help people remember, you know, what what was done back in the G. Because you know, a lot of times, you know, it was you know people forget, but you know, I, I remember doing big things in in Houston, you know, and you know, and, and you know, and signing. And, and getting it in and so you know I'm just trying to well know. earlier you will this elaborate earlier we was talking about the Houston thing uh, could you tell them uh, uh, about the, the how, 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 how Houston was important just to your your record deal oh yeah man well you know I, I initially before I got a deal I, I was doing well in, in Louisiana of course and then I got the deal with, with Luke Records and they released my album nationally. It was a few weeks in, and it was moving kind of slow. And I had this gig in in Houston. Um, I forget where it was at, man, but it, it was it was a major venue. And I remember I I, I rocked nasty bitch. And um, I don't know a couple of weeks after that, maybe maybe a month after that, Luke called me and he was like, "Man, you remember that show you did in Houston? I don't know if those people left and 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 went out and bought the record, but but." You on Billboard now, so mm. Houston was like, you know, the first market outside yeah. of Louisiana that that embraced me. And in Houston was, you know, I'm pretty sure it still is. It was such a big market back then. It wasn't, it wasn't nothing for an artist from Houston, who you know was was basically local, but they were you know pulling out. They were selling a hundred thousand records, you know, just based on Texas. Yeah. yeah so you yeah. know that really kind of you know gave me that 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 charge. 
you know, so yeah, Houston was the first um, spot to really embrace Bust Down outside of Louisiana. They, you know, it was a lot of love, and it was like full steam ahead after that. I'm just doing gigs in Houston, doing gigs in Houston, and you know, and everybody in H Town, they'd be patient with me, but they was always waiting for that nasty bitch. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's one of them records. We are, and we, I don't want to get. I don't want to move too fast. We're gonna come back around to that. But let's go back to just you coming up in New Orleans. You know what I'm saying? What side of town? War, war, you know what I'm saying? Wars and all that. Like, just tell me. Yeah, well, when New Orleans, I'm I'm from the West Bank, um, Marrero, you know, R.I.P. M.C. Thick, um, you know. So I came up um, doing a lot of. Um, I was the opening act a lot of times. Like, you know, I was on the the Push It tour with Salt and Pepper. You know, as as, as a rookie. Um, this before uh, Nasty Bitch and all that. This is you right. just doing local music, right? In the city, okay. right? And um, I, I was on that Push It tour. Um, I was, um, I, I did some 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 of the legs on um, Dougie Fresh's tour. Um, I used to do stuff with with Two Live before I even considered you know signing with Luke Records. Um, and then I would do a lot of um, Gong shows. That was real big in New Orleans. Bobby Marchand and the Magnetic Band. It was like. You know, he'd go to these different clubs maybe five, six times a week, you know, different spots. Can, can you describe the gong show to me? Because in my mind, I, I have an idea of what that might be. But. Yeah, well, the gong shows, man, you know, you, you, you go there, you perform. If you're doing well, you know, they're... Brother they're, Bobby Marchand gong show. Right, right. Yeah, Bobby Marchand gong show was, was real with the, with the magnetic band, you know, just, just an all-star cast on that band. And so if you were doing good, they'd, you know, they'd, they'd throw money at you. And if you were doing bad, you know, you, you got gone. And so around that time, you know, that crack era was just really kicking in. So you had a lot of people inside the club. Oh, so with, they, throwing, money. they throwing money. Yeah, yeah, yeah they throwing yeah. money, money. Yeah, yeah like, take like, home, go, yeah, put this on the bill money. Right, as in first prize would normally be like $70. But in terms of what people gave me and throwing that money at me, seven, dollars $800. And I would do that, you know, five, six times a week at different at different clubs. You know, my people thought I was curb serving or something. You know, I was like, nah, I'm, I'm getting down in these gong shows. And so I made a living doing that. I actually, um, you know, I was young, I, but I actually thought it was it was a wise idea to, to drop out of college to do gong shows. Wait, wait. <laughs> wait a minute. I was like, $700 a night, five, six nights, mm. I'm out. You know, and plus I'm doing something I love. So what, what were you in school at? Um, I was at Southeastern University in, in, in Louisiana. Yeah. And, and the funny thing was, when I, before I got into the gong shows, I sat in a, a couple of gong shows and I was like, this is more like an amateur night at the Apollo crowd. They, they, they are right with hip hop, but that's, you know, it's an older crowd. They're not really in, into that. And so um, I knew shock value in comedy would always work. And, and that was the first time I just sat down and put nasty together. And so after I finished it, I ran it by one of my partners. And I never forgot I was getting mad with him because he kept laughing. And I'd have to stop him. Like, you can't hear the song because you keep laughing. And so at that point. And you rapping this shit with a straight face. Just saying, all right. right. This is the lyrics as we know it. This is right. What yeah, this, this was nasty. <laughs> it, was, it was the finished product. I called up my partner. about to come over there. You got to hear this. And so. Um, I performed in the gong shows. Man, I must have did that for about a year. You know, just just five, six, and I would always do nasty every single night. So Had Ice Mike done the beat and all that already? No, say? no. Hmm. I, I was just, um, I was actually getting down off the instrumental to um, Freaky Tales 2. Hmm, too short. Yeah, and so, um, yeah, so so just night in and night out. I, and so, of course, the other artists they would sing different songs but i would i would do nasty bitch exclusively and 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 nobody ever had a problem with it so at at one point you know i remember i was trying to get into the club i think it was the other side and the owner wouldn't let me in he was like you're too young to be up in here man i'm not letting you in my fucking club man and so bobby marchand showed up and says you better let bust down in here they got a lot of these people in here just to hear that song nasty and it, it never dawned on me. I was like, damn. You know, and, and, and I realized that when I would go out there, it was like people would start moving to the front. I was like, damn, this nasty. I might be able to do something with it. 
So, wait, wait, how old are you? 18, 19 around this time? I was about 19, and, you know, mm -hmm. to get in those clubs, you had to be 21, maybe 18, 19, something like that. And, um, you know, and so I just became a mainstay there, and so people would be like, the dude who sing that nasty song, that was like my name for them at the time. They didn't really know Bust Down. So people would actually just start showing up to hear their songs. And so it just made sense when it was time to make a record. I was like, I might as well go with the tried and true. I know what this song is going to do to the crowds. And so that's why we just went ahead and ran with that. And then, you know, of course, it was a B-side. There was no way to edit that. So, you know, I threw um, Put Your Ballads On as, as, the, as the single, mm -hmm. you know, in hopes that they buy Put Your Ballads On, they're going to flip it over and hear that nasty bitch. And, and that's, that's exactly what happened. So, yeah, nasty bitch, um started with the gong shows. I used to just, I used to kill it with nasty bitch. Even the... um. You know, a part on the songs like Nasty. Man, the whole gong show, man, they just be on it. And I just leave with my money just crying laughing. <laughs> you know, and come back the next night in, in, in another club and, and do it again. So you wrote this on some funny shit. This wasn't no, you just living your life having these experiences and whatever. No, man, I was such a, I mean, you know, everything I write has some degree of experience. But, you know, by, by that time, man, I was, I was, I was a seasoned performer by that time doing these tours i mean i, I was very outgoing I wait do, wait wait so in the gong show era you getting this is when you do the salt and pepper tours and all this just no the gong show era was after the half yeah, okay gotcha gotcha got yeah you. yeah so i was with um prior to that i used to do a lot of shows with um boss hog productions with melvin foley and he would throw these major shows and, and he'd have us you know, as the opening acts on these shows. So that's yeah, how he I got was a doing lot of exposure. major shows. Yeah. He, he, actually, he's the one who, when you heard of Big Frida, it was because, not because of him, but, but he was, he was the that. manager yeah. at that time. Yeah. So, so he's real big. You heard of Chopper Style, Chopper, mm -hmm. he was the manager. Right. That. You right. heard of uh, This Is the Way, the, the Baby Boy song. Right. The way I live, the mm -hmm, one that the mm -hmm, dude, that's mm -hmm. him. Yeah. That's his, you know, all them was his, under his umbrella. Yeah, man, we're full ahead of Ferrari in a project. <laughs> 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 but, so by the time I got to the Gone shows, you know, I, I, was a, I was a seasoned performer, so I would actually make an assessment of what this crowd is. And I knew these people not really into hip hop. You know, nowadays you got, you know, people who are in their 30s and 40s who were basically born listening to hip-hop damn near, you know. But back then it wasn't like that. And so, you know, I know I got to make these people laugh and I got to shock them. I just can't go out there trying to be the greatest lyricist of all time. They're not going to feel that. And so I just sat down, came up with nasty b and I, I, I tried it on one person, and, and he couldn't stop laughing. I was like, I'm going. And I just, I remember the first time I um, performed it, Man, the crowd was just in shock. They were just sitting there looking at me like. And then once I got to the second hook, it's like it made sense to them. And they just, you know, fell out laughing and just started, you know, rooting me on after that. So, yeah. So by the time when it was time to make a record, I knew Nasty was going was gonna to be the one. So, okay, this thing with these tours and like I'm trying to figure out what I was going on in New Orleans at this time. Is this the Manny Fresh Gregory D thing around this time too when you're doing those tours or, that, or they were before even that? No, it, it was it was a little bit after that. Gregory D and Manny Fresh, they, they were before me. That was before that. Yeah. Right. I, I kind of brought in the 90s, I would think. Hmm. You know, like 90, 91. Like that's another, like his records, I'm talking about the, 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 the Black and white copy. Man, we was selling them things, man. Out the record store, we was pushing them things like crack. Hmm. They was coming every Friday by the boatload. Wanted yeah. that. Single. When he came with the with the tape, with the with the with the dog on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Go ahead on, bro. Finish your story. Yeah, yeah, you know. So um But yeah, I, I think if I mean I'm if my memory serves me correct, I, I think I brought in the 90s. Yeah. Like 1990. The latter part, of it, I, I brought it in. But before me was, was Gregory D. And, um, and Warren Mays. And I kind of consider our time as um, 
what is it like pre bounce era? That's what I was Orleans gonna say. This before the bounce really get established, right. the sound of New yeah, Orleans. Bounce was still gang, the gangster bounce at that. It was time. like underground was music still, at the time. Yeah, it was right. still. A, if it was bounce, it was gangster. It wasn't like. So with the party music, no, no, nah, 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 it wasn't party. It right, was, it right. was just regular rap, but it was it was bounce. And it was funny, man, because when I used to do talent shows, you know, in in high school, I'd, I'd get down off drag rap, you know, before bounce. Yeah, I just felt like that was a fire instrumental, and you know, it's gonna make over my the whole job thing, easy. not yeah. looping it, just over, just yeah, over the, the whole thing. the whole thing. Right, right. And so, um, yeah, I, I actually competed. Tucker came out with where they at. Um, on my second single, which was Pop That Thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I had to compete with him on that. And i never forget, man, when I first heard um, Where They At by Tucker, I, I, I did have some thoughts about it, cause it, but that was because I was comparing it to other things. I wasn't looking at it for what it was. And so, you know, it, it banged out and it was doing very well. So I remember I was doing a show in Houston. We were at a sound check. I think it was jam city or something like that and it was in the middle of the day we did the sound check we were in the parking lot um me and my dj howard and i never forget man these 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 two females man they, they both had convertible bmws and um they, they were zooming through the parking lot i guess it was on the radio and, and they were bumping where they at by tucker i was like damn bounce music followed us out here you know so he was he was getting love out here in age town and then and then you know jimmy hit two out here yeah yeah you know that was that was interesting because I was looking at it as, you know, okay, that's a local thing in New Orleans. I didn't see the 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 potential in it at that time, because you know I used to I used to hang around with with DJ Irv, and you know before he even came up with Bounce when when Irv was um, DJ Doc when he used to DJ he used to cut for um Ricky B Shake It for Your Hood yeah it's yeah all good yeah. yeah Ricky uh y'all holla y'all holla y'all holla yeah, yeah. yeah. that's I was going I was just gonna ask you about him. No, he come. Yeah, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's my dog. He sent me this hey, thanks for that thanks for that bob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And my people. So yeah, man, that was interesting. But you know, my movement and you know, I'm usually associated with with Tim Smooth and MC Thick. You know, I got to have it. I don't give a damn. I'm Marrero. You know, and, and it, it, it made sense because all three of us, we we were childhood friends. And, and I remember one time we were all in a vehicle and I was like, man, man one day we're going to be famous. Mm -hmm. And, and you know, and everybody, you know, when people say things like that, you, you know, you want it to come true. But, you know, you take it with a grain or whatever. And then I remember one time we ran into each other in a, in a different state. And we were all in the same city that night. I was like, damn, we got limousines. We got money. We, 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 we. I told you. <laughs> you know, it was like it was spoken into existence. But, um, but all right, P. Tim Smooth and, and MC Thick. Yeah, that was a trio, boy. You, Tim, and and and, and, and Stu. Yeah. Yeah, bro. Y'all, y'all have the West Bank down, down. Yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, like they, like when people started talking that, like how they such such ain't in Atlanta. Did mm -hmm. it? We ain't say that shit when them niggas came. Hmm. Cause it was, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It was like they from the West Bank. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We wasn't like that. Ain't part of us, right? Now nah, right. we was like, nah, that's that's us too, right? That's us too. They like they embraced it, them from being on the on the on the west side of the city. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it it was all love, man. I had never experienced it. Any time somebody would clown on me like that, it was my friends. You know, and we mm -hmm. we we just ribbing. You know, it wasn't serious. These people got love for me, but I never experienced anybody saying, you know, all oh, y'all. You know, you're not from here, so you ain't real. I, I, I never experienced that in the world. Is that a thing with being from certain parts where people would try to say, well, you ain't? You well, know. you know, that's how it is. That, you know, somebody try to exclude you from, from, from the situation because you on the other side of town. You know what I'm saying? So now you can't be this because you over there, you that. Nah, we all together, man. Mm, this, right. this, this, when you say this, this is, New Orleans is bigger than the geographical location. You know what I'm saying? New Orleans stretch out a couple of cities this way, a couple of cities that way, all the way to now that uptown is in Baton Rouge. Hmm. Right. Well, because because technically, Marrero is in Jefferson Parish, which is neighboring to Orleans Parish. 
But I mean, to be honest with you, I mean, I mean, my 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 mother's from the Fisher Project. My my dad from out the yo. Yeah. Um, shucks, I I worked at Circle Foods though. You see what I'm I saying? I worked at That's the clothesline laundromat across the street from Jeans Poor Boys. You see what I'm Green. saying? That's Nightwalk. But yeah, yeah that's, that's, size, we gonna have to go out there and I'm gonna have to have you like take me around no, and, we gonna and do the, show me yeah, like we're gonna do the we're gonna do something. We're gonna do the food and we're gonna do the the, the cult. We're gonna do you gotta both. See, I gotta see what that man no, chew. Gotta, I, heard, I heard about that man chew out there, man. Let's do the food <laughs> and that's a whole to do. Yeah. Just the food. Yeah. That's a whole show. That's a whole nother show. Yeah. Just the food. We gonna, we, gonna, the, we gonna bring that to y'all before the year over with. We oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We working yeah. over here. I'm outside and I ain't going back inside. Yeah, yeah. Ain't, no, <laughs> ain't no reason to. I done brought my wife and my sister-in-law outside with me, so you know it's a problem. <laughs> Went pick bus down up. He trying to go. He trying to go to the retirement home or some shit. I'm like, nah, we ain't doing that yet, dog. Not yet. Not yet. We ain't doing that yet, bro. We gotta get some of this Millie Jackson money. Yeah, man, it's it's beautiful, man. I'm I'm with it. You know, I'm, I'm nah, the culture love you, dog. That's why I brought you to the New Orleans uh, Legends of Hip Hop, and we honored you and all of that stuff uh, along with Tim and right. and Stu and you know your whole little crew. That w that was all because of you. You know what I'm saying? So we was like, let's put this down, and you know it, it's only right if we put all of them together. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. Along with Mobo. Right. You know what I'm saying? The whole deal. I know, if you don't see what we did, that's what we was doing. Well, no, I, I picked up on it. To be honest with you, that was the main reason I decided to do that show. Right. Because it, it was to show respect that we are together. I was like, they, if they're showing respect they to Tim Smooth and MC Thick, I got to show bank. up. You know, yeah. They always forget. Netflix come. TV One come. Everybody come and they forget the West Bank. Right. Hmm. Nah, we got you. Yeah, and I appreciate that, man. You know, <laughs> we got y'all, dude, because we, you know, I'm West Bank and East Bank and Night War, so. Right, right. I got a lot of people to answer to. Mm hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it is, man. Yeah, I, I lived in that Seven Ball for a while. I, mean, you know, I ran into Cheeky Black out there one time. I remember this. This was interesting, man. It, this was after, you know, my record had kind of died Chica down. Cheeky Black, the truth. Right, and, and I kind of went into retirement. Um, I was living in the Seven Ward on Paul Street. You know, it was going down. And so... Yeah, me too. So, <laughs> so Devious called me, and he said, Bust Down, I got this record I want to do. It's almost guaranteed I got spins. I was like, all right, I'm going to do it. So when I was recording the song, I noticed when I'd be walking through the Seven Ward, you know, they kind of knew me, but, you know, it, it, it was kind of treacherous around there, and they were just kind of looking, you know, and so I said, I'm gonna throw something in there about the seven bar. And so um, I said, um, stronger than ever clear, cooler than fly guy, moving the crowd like a seven wall drive by. Hmm. So I said that, and then they started spinning it on the radio. Man, it went from them dudes looking at me like, who is this Look out there, bus down. <laughs> wow. You know, I, I earned my pass, you yeah, know. I yeah, used yeah, hip hop yeah, to yeah, make yeah. it safe, you know. The culture, man. They, I'm serious, but just how them guys on the block love you, you know, the whole city love you, and, and it's amazing that, you know, they got some people here in Houston that love you. You know, I, I told people, I was like, hey, uh, say, man, I got a bus down coming today. Nasty bitch. Right. When you find, I, I said, man, Sice, man, say we got bust down coming, he coming, bro. Like, man, H Town has always shown me major love, like big time. This, this, it's this has got to be one of my strongest markets. I was in, man, big time. You know, shout out to to to, to Face, um, Big Mike, um, you know Willie. You know, I did, I you know I. Encountered all of these guys. I hung out the whole shebang. I, I remember I kicked it with Bill one time, man. Oh was, man, okay. I already I know what he's like, going. Well, I don't I know like, where it's going, but I'm like Bill. You know, <laughs> Bill was something else. He was a character, man. I, I you know, I. I get no, we got that. time for a Bushwick Bill story. Go ahead. Yeah, no, nah, that's cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. Always. Time yeah, for we got Bushwick time for Bill we got time for Bill story. Yeah, yeah man. We were in the um, Seven Ward, and um, he had called me. He was. I think he was supposed to perform at the FM 98 talent show, like to open up like the celebrity guest. Mm -hmm. And so he called me and he was like, meet me over here. I was like, all right, Bill in the seven ward. 
And so um, I get over there and he hanging out with um, with the L, the, the Black Robin Hood. MCL. MCL. I think he used to write for Bill Yeah, he sometime. was writing for Bushwick at the time. Yeah. MCL was the first. Remember you used to go in Pen and Pixel? Mm-hmm. And they had this big old picture with the guy shooting the gun and that bullet. That's MCL. No oh, shit. Yeah. That's yeah. his album. That's from New Orleans. Yeah, that's crazy. So, so, so he was writing for Bill. Yeah, I think so. I, that's what no, I heard. He was, he was writing for Bill. He was, he was writing for Bill. At yeah, because I mean, L was a superb writer. No, he was. Yeah, he he was with rap a lot at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I get over there, and so Bill, he he's got this this cigar box, but it's it's filled with all of the blunts rolled, and so we hanging out in the seven ward, and the dudes we with, I'm like. These, these dudes, curb servers, they just dressed to impress. They must be going to the club or something, but you know, this, this, this dangerous people. But I mean, it was cool. And so Bill sitting there hugging the box and, and, some, and he says, I'm not giving anybody any of my sh-. <laughs> And so Al, he the one who really had the relationship with him. So he was like, he waited about five minutes and said, man, smoke one of those blunts, man. And Bill was like, no, no, I'm not doing it. And, you know, they just started kind of looking at him because they, they were showing him hospitality, man. I mean, he's over there with them. And Bill is sitting there saying, yeah, y'all being nice to me, but I, I got all this my weed, weed though. and I ain't, I ain't giving you a hit. Nothing. So, you know, it seemed like it, it settled down and then, you know, somebody took Bill box. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to just leave it at that. It took Bill. And I was like, man, Bill, man, why, why did you have to do it like that? And so, classic Bill, it was time to go to the show. And I think his, his old lady had his vehicle and, and never returned. And so the people are calling, and Bill is like, you know, I'm trying to get over there. And, and he just didn't have no vehicle because his old lady took it. So we, we just hung out in the seven ward, you know, for the rest of the night. With, you know, and just kicked it. And it was just like, man, Bill, you just missed the whole concert, man. And you, you got your blunts to took. Right. Yeah. Right. You know. <laughs> Y'all can't even sit out and smoke and chill. <laughs> That's funny, man. Yeah, man. Well, Bill was a character, man. Rest in peace, Bushwick Bill. Most yeah. definitely. You know, we had yeah, some. Bushwick, man. Bushwick really did show, show New Orleans a lot of love. Because he, he worked with me. He worked with Trey Aid. He worked with, a, you know, he let a lot of people work with him. You know, from New Orleans, he let them work, you know, on his projects and write for him and different stuff like that. So, yeah, he 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 cool being. Yeah, I always I always had much love for the Ghetto Boys, man, because one time before we had really met, um, I had a show in Baton Rouge at the Centroplex, and backstage before the show, these these marshals showed up. And they, they put this ordinance on, on the wall and it, and it had highlighted no profanities and all this. I was like, damn, I, I, my hit song is Nasty Bitch. These people basically telling me. And there's no way I could clean that up. So I get out on stage and, you know, I, I improvised. I freestyled a little bit, did this song. I, I worked it for about an hour, but I didn't do Nasty Bitch. And I was walking off and the whole crowd just, Nasty 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 And I was like... Damn. So I just went ahead and did it. And by the time I made it to the second hook, the police got on stage and they snatched us off and, you know, put, you know, put the cuffs on us. But to me, you know, I'm young. This is, this is a historical moment. I'm like, these people are going to remember this shit. And so when they took me off stage in handcuffs, I'll never forget later on that night, the Ghetto Boys got on stage and, and they had the crowd saying, free bus down. Hmm. I was like, the Mage Town dudes, they, I'm all right with them, for like for real. That's you know? real. So yeah, That's I appreciated real. that. Man, how does how does the record lead to the deal with Luke? Well, I was um I was I was banging out in the state, and the BRE convention came to town, mm. and then that's how I ended up. Can you talk a little bit about that, just for historical purposes, just how important that you know the BRE? Oh yeah, yeah. man, that's 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 the industry showing up to New Orleans. <laughs> And so, um, since I was, you know, hot in the city, there was some kind of showcase with just industry people. That that was the audience, just indus- industry people. And that's the one thing we had was that BRE coming every year. 
right you know like consecutive like clockwork right every year so we could prepare prepare for bre prepare for bre prepare for bre right right and so i was on that showcase and um i, I did put your ballads on and and i rocked it and you know the next morning i remember i, I had fell asleep getting drunk at um dj little daddy house it was me and him and i think it was mc dick and I got that I got that call. It was like Luke wanna talk. I was like, damn. Cause you know, I've always, I always was a two live fan. You know, and I had done shows with them before, but we had never really explored me actually signing with them. And I never forget that morning. Um I you know, I had breakfast with Luke. I met Two Short. It was just like, damn, boy, my dreams coming true pretty fast. And and Luke was like, Okay, you know, give us a couple of weeks and we'll get back and um we'll 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 get it done. And and he, you know, he kept his word. And before hmm. you know it, we was out there um, in Miami signing. No shit. Okay, tell me about that experience. Because you're talking about Luke, you're talking about, you about Two Live Crew, you're talking about like 1990. Like, this yeah, is, yeah. This Band is when, in the USA. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was around for that. And you got this song, Nasty Bitch, which falls right in pocket with all the shit I, I, they got going exactly. on. Exactly. That's why it was a perfect fit. You know, so um, we, we did a lot of shows. Um, and we rocked it because again, it was a perfect fit. I, I remember on the road, you know, that my my roommate was 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 Chris Wong, you know, rest in peace, Chris Wong, you know, and um, but it, it was interesting, man, because you know with Luke, you know, it, he it, it was like he did a lot of things in house, like like he used to press his his own stuff. I thought that was impressive, man. You know, you know, mm. he, yeah, the pressing plant, like his own. Yeah, thing. yeah, he press his own stuff. I was like, damn. You know, he he did a lot of things, man. That 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 were impressive. Um, of course, there was always conflicts between, you know, him and the artist, and I, I think that's just typical sometimes. Based on money was, and shit like that, or or, or creative uh, differences. Yeah, it, I I would never really get into everybody's business and ask them what they would. You, you know, of course, I, I think it was about money. Hmm. You know, and. You know, you just never know. Sometimes the, the label is doing something wrong. Sometimes the artists just don't understand the business. But to me, that was like typical of, you know, the relationship between the artists and, and the label. But um, it was a hell of an experience, man, touring with two live crew like that. I remember um, we did a couple of shows and, and Brother Marquis, he was, he, was, he was angry with Luke at the time. So, but he still wanted to do the show. I think Brother Marquis still might be angry with Luke. I yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was funny, man, because cause Mark would get on stage and like lip sync. Or sometimes he'd just be walking around on the stage like, you know, I'm here. You know, maybe not, not even saying the verse. You know, it was, just, it was just weird space. And, you know, I'm sitting there like the, the beef with two live crew is playing out on stage if the people are just paying attention. You know, it's kind of like his verse might roll and he might not even, you know, jump in there. But he on the stage, he can get his money, you know, and it was like Luke was, let's just do it. You know, so, yeah, man, I, I was there for, you know, a lot of things that went down with, um, with Luke Records. But, you know, I appreciate the opportunity that, that Luke gave me to, to really get out there because I thought it was funny. Like we, I think we were in Orlando, Florida, if I'm not mistaken. And I had just signed with them. And Luke didn't know my background. I mean, he knew I had done shows, but he didn't know I was comfortable in front 10, 20,000 people. I, I could freestyle in front of people like that. And so we were at this, this, this Pop Deck Coochie contest in a packed house. And I was like, let me rap. And he said, nah, man, you, I don't know if you're ready for that, man. That's a rough crowd out there. It's like, man, give me the mic. Man, I performed nasty. Man, those people, it was like they were ready to carry me out on their shoulders. Man, I was like, I'm telling you, nasty is going to do the damn thing. And so when I went to Pac Jam in Miami. Oh, I love Pac Jam. He said, I'm going to test y'all. This is a rough crowd right here. I said, I ain't going to have no problems. I'm going to do nasty. Bitch. I did nasty bitch and killed it. And so he was like. And I got to see if you could keep this role going. So he, he, that same night we went to, I think it was Luke's at the beach. Luke's on the beach, mm. I think was the name of the club. And I, I slammed that bitch on him again and um, just, just completely tore it down. And then at that point, Luke was like, you know, we, we need to hurry up and get this put out. And um, 
you know, I never came out with a second with a with a second project, but it was interesting. One time I was talking to Luke, we were in the airport. And um Luke don't know this. This is after everything, or this is in the while you're still with the label and all that. Yeah, I'm still I'm still with the label, everything going swell now. Mm -hmm. And I remember, man, Luke don't know this, but to this day, but I'm gonna go ahead and expose it. You know, we'd be at the at the airports and I'd kind of walk away and go do my thing, and people would always walk up and say, Who is that guy? You know, talking about Luke, and I'd be like, That's that's MC Hammer. <laughs> And so, <laughs> so Luke, <laughs> Luke <Some> random ass <laughs> shit. <laughs> so Luke, Luke, well, we'd be on the plane, and he'd be like, motherfuckers keep calling me MC Ham. I'm like, that's fucked up, you know. <laughs> that's fucked up. Why would they think something like that? But I remember one time he told me, he said, man, bust down. That nasty is on fire, and you don't even have a video. He said, man, your second project is going to blow up. And I was like, yeah, yeah, of course it, it never it never happened. But, you know, I think about that conversation. You know, maybe I could have handled things differently because, you know, I was young. And, um, That's what I was going to ask you. Did, what, what happened with it not being a second album? Like, Well, money. You know, it was like, you know, where, where's the money, man? And so what, this is when the shit hit the fan. Luke called me and he was like, you need to do another album. And I was like, all right, pay me for the first one. And, you know, they sh had this list of things that... The itemized list of everything. Right. Coopables. Everything was on that mm -hmm. Burger King, just, you know, everything, you know. And I was like, man, look, I don't care about none of that shit. So he was like, well, you know, do a video for Pop That Thing. I was like, no, I, I need to get paid. You know, I said, because all you're going to do is, is it's going to be recoupable. I'm, I'm not getting any money like this. And so eventually, Luke said, okay, I'll give you, I met him in a hotel in, in New Orleans. And he said, I'll give you a hundred grand, you know, but you got to, you know, pay for everything. As in the production, production. And, and everything. Cards. And on top, that, that's, that's recoupable. So it's it's really not like just um, don't keep fucking yourself, mm -hmm. right? And so, you know, eventually, you know, we ended up in um in court. Of course, he got into it with Joe Weinberger, and ended up in bankruptcy court while all of this is going on. So of course, now we in bankruptcy court dealing with that, and um, it just turned into a just just a, a circus. And so at that point, you know, I'm trying to do other things at that time, and um. You know, I just ended up going back to school. <laughs> you know, I was trying to get, because to be honest with you, it was interesting, man, because, you know, at, when all of that was going on, it took the fun out of it. And I started making these songs that didn't sound good. You know, I, I was no yeah. longer in that same space that I was when I did that first album. It was fun. We had money. I had money in my pocket. You know, we doing it. We making these songs is just easy. It's just easy. But when that happened, you know, I'm like, okay, I got to make a song to make some money. And it was just different. And I let people hear the songs and they'd be like, that's, that's all right. And I was glad they were honest because I'd bring it to my people. You know, they'd be like, that, that's all right. I mean, it's not, you know, nasty bitch. It's not pop that thing. It's not this. It's not that. And, um, you know, the, the thrill was gone. And I, I tried, man. It was like, I even had a song I put on um, Q93 just to test it out, and it was called um, There It Is. And, and I, I appreciate the fans from New Orleans. They kept it real with me. When they were calling in, it was on Slam It or Jam It. They, they jammed it, but it was like, only because we love you, Buzz Down, because this song is all right. Yeah. It's, it's not like you know something that we really want to hear again, but we're going to go ahead and jam it you know, out of love yeah. for you. And I was like, damn, that's that's like charity, you know. Mm. So, you know? Mm. Mm. <laughs> so I went ahead and, and jumped back in school right quick. But um Let me let me <laughs> ask you this with the deal. Was it a was it a situation of you just signing maybe like not the best deal, not necessarily having the knowledge, or was it you signing this deal and things just not being honored the way they were supposed to be honored? Damn, it's I I've tried not to touch that one. All right. I talked to some people in New Orleans who were retailers, two of them, mom and pop shops, and, and, and people 
who I respect, who, who had a lot to do with my career when I was local and, and show me love to this very day. So their thing was, and, and again, this is coming from a retailer. I'm not saying I saw this with my own too, but this is what a retailer, two retailers told me. Luke, they were saying, is bootlegging his own shit. So they were like, I got a box of that shit coming in tomorrow. Now, of course, I can't drag them in court because that implicates them. So when I talk to Luke, they're saying basically you broke even. So we don't really owe you. But when I talk to retailers, they're saying... There were some more units. Right. These are units that are not being accounted for. So I'm like, damn, you know, what a game. You know, you... Like you said, he had his own... He was pressing his own pressing, shit. Right. Yeah. right. I was like, what a game. So you make it to where I sell enough to break even on, on paper. But, you know, under the table, all this other shit is going on. So I was like, man, give, give me the money, man. I'm, you know, that, that's it. I'm not playing around with this. Cause, that's why your approach was that, like, man, give right. me the money. Because you had already had that kind Right, that's right. And, and I had already knew something about the game i mean i'm not gonna say i was my most savvy in, in terms of contracts at that time i was more of a rapper than a businessman but i knew whatever debt that you have on album one spills over onto album two to album three to end to me that's the pimping and then while you in debt trying to recoup when it's all said and done if you happen to 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 break even and and actually pay it off and it's time to get paid it's like you don't own the shit anyway. It's like you just basically paid for something that somebody else is going to own anyway. You know, so I was just like, man, you got to give me some paper. So, you know, I, I listen, I'm not dissing Luke because I, I don't take it personal. It was business. And, you know, I was slipping. So that's on me. I, I, I learned from it. I grew from it. I'm a better person because of it. That's that's just how I go. You know, I. People look at it as, well, you got played. No, I look at it as I was paying dues. That, that's it. But, you know, I saw Luke, you know, after the whole Marquis situation. And um, he, he, you know, he came with his rebuttal. And he was saying, well, I, I never messed over anybody. And, you know, and this and that. And I get it. You know, he, he, he playing the saint. But Buzz Down can honestly say. I never ever received a royalty check from Luke Records. Never. The only the only money I got from them was a fifteen hundred dollar check for the song I did on Luke's album, Dissing Kid and Play. I'm sorry, Kid and Play. I was wrong. You know, that's just what it was though. But anyway, that was that's the only money I ever received from Luke Records. And so I'm sitting here doing these concerts. And I, I remember one time, man, I was in Richmond, Virginia. That was another market I was strong in. And I remember telling Howard, it was we were opening up for Shaba Ranks, I think. He had just mm. won a Grammy that week or something like that. And, man, this was like... That's some early 90s shit right here. Bro. Right, okay. right. And it's like 20, 25,000 people. I was told college was, was back in and everybody came back in town. And I remember telling, um, telling Howard in the hotel, I was like, man, these people ain't going to know me. You know, but when I got out on the stage, they knew the words to all of the songs. And I'm like, and, and Luke Records is telling me they don't owe me anything. <laughs> I'm like, nothing? You could at least try to play it off and say, look, man, here, here's 10 grand. I would have still turned my nose up to it, but nothing? Absolute. So really, the money I was making, we, we had a fallout with that in a way because with, with the shows. Because I'm like, I don't mind doing promotional shows. But, you know, at the time, even though my album wasn't out, I was hot in Louisiana, you know, before I was national. So I'm sitting here doing promotional shows for free. And I'm home, like, getting the bag. I, man, in these same, these same cities, man, I could be getting paid. You know, and, and it hit the fan one time, man. We were, we were, um, Club Strawberries, I think it was. Mm. The infamous back to strawberry. Yeah, we, we was in the limousine, and um, and Luke was in the limo. I'm not gonna say which which artist it was I was with, but you know I wasn't accustomed to this. We we get in the in the limousine, and the artist tells Luke, "Man, we hungry." 
I'm like, damn, that's that's deep as a because you know we we grown. And so Luke was like, so Luke pulled out some money and he's like sat it on the console. And the artist man, man, he damn near elbowed me to get that money. You know, by that time I'm bust down. I'm I got shows that I'm not doing. I got money in my pocket. I ain't begging for. Shit. In fact, you know, I'm I'm good. I you you know, but I was like, damn, this this is an artist who has to tell this man, you know, he's hungry. And then when he responds to him, it's just like, you know, and the artist was like, you know, bam, give me that money. I, I wasn't used to that. I had my balance on by then. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but again, I'm I'm not I'm not trying to knock Luke, but you know, I, all I can tell you is my truth on it. You know, that's why I remember when I met um I was doing a show in Houston and I met H Town. And they had on the Luke jackets. That that was fly too. I think it was like these white jackets. And I feel bad about this because I didn't have a lot to say to them. I mean, we spoke and dapped off and everything, but I, I remember leaving that conversation saying those dudes probably think I have a problem with them, but it wasn't. It was just like You just see what's ahead. I'm saying to my right, I'm saying to myself, man, I I don't want to throw cold water on what these guys are doing because they already signed. It's a done deal. They they got the jackets just like I did, but you know, it was a it was a different kind of jacket, of course. But so I wasn't gonna sit there and be like, yeah, man, bust down. We both signed the Luke record, man. Look, man, that mother don't pay you. I, I didn't want to do that. So you know, I it it was weird space with them, but I just hope you know they they didn't leave that conversation thinking you know bust down is acting funny or anything like that. It was just like, man, this you know Luke, he ain't he if he didn't break me off, you know, so yeah, so shout out to H Town, man, for mm. real. So how long did you stay on Luke Records? Man, it was a little over a year, you know. But man, another thing, man, that that was a trip with Luke. You know, I I remember when, when Luke kind of went on a tour and he was going to these different cities and I, I think he was looking for artists and that's how he found me. And so by the time I was, by the time he ran into me, popping was what they call twerking now, but popping was already hot in New Orleans. And the, the first popping song, in my opinion, even though he never said the word, but it was Get It Girl by Warren Mays. Warren Mays. So, so popping was already big in New Orleans. And so when I finally touch bases with Luke, I go to the studio, I drop, pop that thing. And um, so I'm like, you know, when it's gonna drop, when it's gonna drop. Now, I, I don't know, I'm not saying it was any, any wrongdoing, but it was just a hell of a coincidence that before my sh was dropped, Luke dropped, pop, pop that the coochie. coochie. Oh. And, and on the end of the song, it's like when I say psych on pop that thing, it was like he said breakdown. And you know the music stopped and break. And then, listen, I got love for Brother Marquise, and I know he go in that studio and freestyle. So I don't know, but I just know he said at the end of his verse, you know, none of my girls they never complain. So come on, baby, and pop that thing. So bam, I called Luke Records, and I was like, man, what the? F and you know they never put Luke on the phone about it, and and it was it was squashed after that. But that that was a concern of mine. I was like, you know, maybe that song takes some of my steam. But it was they were so different in a way. It, it it didn't happen like that. Thank God. But you know that that was the beginning. That was the first time I was like, man, that that was foul. You know, you 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 know I did that song first. You know, popping came from New Orleans first. But you know, you 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 jumped on that and did the pop that coochie thing instead of and 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 that's the radio version. I think the pop that coochie. Hey, it's it's pop that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so when they be like, "Don't stop, pop that pussy," I think he did that like on on Doodle Brown. I think was the name of the song. I was like, man, that's 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 a New Orleans turn yeah. right there. That's crazy. You just tied that up like that because it makes sense. Yeah, 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 man. You know, I was like, wow. You know, you. You know, See, you, I didn't want I didn't want to bring this up in my interview, so I'm bringing all the people to confirm my bullshit. <laughs> 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 so you know, it it was a trip, man. It, it was it was a ride to remember, you know. Hmm. But um, but yeah, we did have a lot of good experiences though out there on the road. 
but you know that was that was the first thing that was the first red flag hmm. you know and so you know and then after Luke got in got into the situation with Joe Weinberg and bankruptcy court and all of that is that was, how you got out the deal or how did you end up no man it, it just it just expired because you know I just I ended up letting it go because um you know we were involved in that when it was um in bankruptcy court but you know my, my dad he was paying for everything my dad was a was an all man from from texas you know so well he this is where his business was he's, he's from new orleans but he you know he was a texas man in terms of his living and so he was able to pay for all of that and so my dad gets caught up on a charge and um you know i didn't i didn't have four five hundred dollars to pay an attorney every time they pick up the phone and so you know our attorneys they of course they kind of backed off and then i was like well look at least send me the paperwork that we paid for and then they never sent it and you know the whole time i'm, I'm in school I'm, I'm working at a laundromat you know it was just real at that time i didn't have time to really to, to sit on that like that and um you know but at the end of the day Joe Weinberger ends up the king of Miami Bounce. He got the whole catalog. I was like, damn. You know, even Luke got played in the end. I at least that's my perspective on it. Because, you know, I always had the feeling that, and I don't know this for certain, but I always had the feeling that Weinberger was, was kind of telling Luke different things about the game. And I said to myself, damn. Luke probably thought Joe Weinberger was his friend, but he was actually fattening him up for the slaughter. Instead of trying to jack everybody, let him get everybody money and I'll, I'll take his. I don't know if it went down like that, but that's definitely what it looked like. Because mm. Joe Weinberger ended up making a lot of money selling that catalog. You know, he came up big time. I, I called Joe Weinberger's office about a month ago. And um, I know he's accustomed to artists probably calling and saying, give me my shit. You stole my shit. But this, this was a proud moment for me. I, I, I called with that bankroll. How much? Hmm. You know, I ain't, I ain't no broke artist calling. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm a man now. I'm ready to do some business. Yeah. Right. Hmm. And he never got back to me on it. But that was still a, a, a proud moment for me because, you know, I, was, I showed up with that paper <laughs> you know, to get my shit back. You know, he, like I said, he never got back at me, but, you know, he, you know, I'm pretty sure he respect that because a lot of artists are called complaining and crying and all of that kind of stuff. Nah, nah, I, sh I showed up with that money, hmm. you know, so, but yeah, man, I, you know what's funny? I, I think this, this is relevant to our conversation. I'm just vibing, man. Before I came out with Nasty B nationally and before I met Luke, I had a concert at Club Discovery, or Rumors, or whatever it was called at the time, in New Orleans. Yeah, and, I know what you're talking about. And the Ghetto Boys were on the show. And, and we were talking to Lil' J. And my manager was talking to Lil' J, you know, about getting me signed a rap a lot. And so I wasn't in on that conversation, but the way it went, it was kind of like maybe Jay said, okay, we'll see what Bust Down got when he get in concert. So, you know, rap a lot was there. And so I start performing nasty. Now, I'll, people always hear me say this. If, if you never had a, a bad night in, in, in the entertainment business performing, you, you just never, you didn't do enough shows. So this night in particular, I have a bad night. And I mean, the crowd, they were, they were giving it to me. They were, they were booing. They were, it, it. it and man, they had these broads that was in the, 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 front, the front row, man, they were going off. And so I had a rough night and of course, you know, Jay was like, told my manager, nah, we're not going, we're not with that. And he, you know, told us a few improvements we could make on the song. Um, I even, I don't know this for certain, but my manager told me Jay even suggested, you know, to make the song a bit better, you know, get Willie on the verse. Hmm. Which I wouldn't mind because I've always been a Willie D fan, you know, and be snapping like so. But, you know, so it was like, you know, he need improvement. And so later on, about a month later, it was the same scenario with two live crew in that very same club on that very same night. As in, that's probably going to be most of the same crowd. I was like, damn, they just booed me up in there. 
And so I got up there with the exact same show. And I did nasty and tore the roof off it. And, you know, Luke was, you know, all right, we'll, we'll you know, okay, we'll see what's up. You know, so that, that was a trip, you know. It, it, but you just never know, you know, what you're going to encounter in, you know, in a show. But I almost signed with Rap a lot, though. Hmm. It was close, but I bombed out that night. <laughs> and I wasn't mad at anything like that. I mean, I had to respect the game. I bombed out. What, what else were they was supposed to think? And and that was I I had met um I remember it was it was humiliating too because it was in the contract we had to do an autograph signing so you got the ghetto boy shit over here my shit over here, nobody in my line and and they got a long ass line and that's how I met Brad I walk up to Brad and said man you got another cigarette bro <laughs> my nerves are bad like a man but you know but at the end of the day man that's that's all the good times hmm. you know that was just a part of it you know yeah. you. You know, even you know, even Rocky got knocked down sometime, but he got back up and handled that. Like you say, yeah, if you really doing it and you don't run into that, you ain't really doing it. Oh man, I had hard I had rough nights in H Town. Hmm. I remember one night in Houston, and I was wrong for this, but I was still kinda, you know, I was, you know, young and wild and they, they had this guy in the crowd and he was, you know, giving me a hard time. And so usually when somebody gave me a hard time back then, you know, I I dedicate nasty you know to, to their moms and so that's that's totally wrong though and so when i did that man it was like a large portion of the dudes that was in the crowd just turned on me and and the guy who i said it to got on stage and um later on uh, security had to jump in and, and 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 get that under control later on they told me man you you crazy that dude just got out of prison that's a that's a gang member, you know what I'm saying? I was like, damn, I ain't mean to do that. <laughs> and um, another time I was in H Town, I was, I was, don't get me wrong, I had way more success stories, you know, performing than, than rough nights. But you know, you always remember the rough nights. And you know, I was performing these new songs and, and the crowd was kind of getting antsy because they wanted nasty And so somebody in the crowd threw some ice at me and um you know that they, they, they stopped the music and i'll never forget this man this was love from age town man that i th think it was the promoter the, the police were coming to find out who did it and the promoter said who who threw that ice at bus down and it was like the whole crowd pointed at the guy <laughs> i was like yeah you know that's love you know and we got back at it and i went ahead and did nasty little bit earlier <laughs> since they were so kind to me that night but um yeah man I, I i got a lot of history with with houston big time that's why after katrina you know i, I chose to to make it here mm. you know because i'm I already you know i'm already comfortable with the culture you know versus you know going here or there you know what i'm saying i'm like i'm, I'm going to age town that's that's where it's at yeah, well, you know, yeah, for sure, for sure. Well, yeah, now nah, we definitely fuck with Bust Down in this age, man. Nasty bitch is a classic, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, you know, man. I like I say, it's just an honor to have you here, man. You one of them guys I always heard, I never saw before, right? I'm seldom seen, I'm a ghost in the machine. Mm -hmm. yeah. I you know. put a face to the to the uh, face to the neck. All I had was the cover, and you know the dog had his foot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> dog was on some stomp down shit. You know what See, that, that's the thing with nasty, <laughs> man. I, I. You know, people, when they heard it, they never really, at least this is how I, I got it, they, they never looked at it as, damn, he's just being, you know, over the top with the disrespect. No, it was always seen as comedy. Because to be honest, when you listen to it, you, you can tell I, I was, a, and, and still am, a Rudy Ray Moore fan. Yeah. You know, Dolomite. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, and I actually met Dolomite on that note. We went to a club one night and Dolomite, they introduced us, and, and, I, and, and man, I was so proud of this moment. Dolomite says, so is this the little boy that wants to be me? I was like, little boy? So we, we start ribbing. So, I mean, I didn't go, I didn't hit him below the belt or anything like that, because, man, I, I, man, I love Dolomite. So, but it was like a lightweight ribbing session. We talking about each other like a dog or whatever. Mm. And, uh, man, that was just one of the highlights of my career, being able to, you know, to rib. With, yeah. with Dolomite in front of crowd. No, nah, that's, I mean, shit, yeah. Legendary. Yeah, I didn't just meet him. I actually. You had a moment. Yeah. We we went at each other. Yeah. Man, what kind of shoes, man? You, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was beautiful, man. 
So yeah, it, it you know, so nasty. It has that that dolomite feel to it. It was it was it was it was by design to be you know humorous and shocking for the gong shows. And shucks, I was like, well, working the gong show might work everywhere else, which which ended up being the case. Yeah, yeah, times record. Man, I, I was at um a studio. This was a couple of years ago in Houston. I was over there with um with Harvey Love. And my boy Harvey Love. Yeah, yeah. yeah. shouts out to Harvey Love. Yeah, and so. There was somebody at the studio, and, and the guy was like, that's Buzz Down with me, and that's the You know, I just, yeah, yeah, man. He said, man, I love that song, man. I was like, man, I appreciate that, man, because you know the song, Old in a Month. He said, no, man, I love that song. And he rolled his arm, he rolled his sleeve up, and he had a tattoo with a, with a broad, with her legs open. I think that's what it was, and it said, nasty <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn, I had to dab him off again on that one. I'm like, man, that's love for real, you know. Mm. So, yeah, shout out to Harvey Love, man. I've done some recordings with him. He he kind of helped me at times get, get the cobwebs off, too. And, and, you know, I was always proud about that because, you know, I talked to my people from New Orleans, and I'm like, yeah, I'm out here dealing with some of the made guys from H-Town on, on the hip-hop mm -hmm. scene. You know? Yeah, Harvey Love, Bonafide legend. Yeah, bonafide. yeah, real talk. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah, well, man. Sites, you got anything before we close up, man? Nah, man, we're gonna be. Uh, this dude is is oh, shop is open. The busdown dot com coming. Shop open. Back doing shows, huh? Yeah. DM me, DM him. Uh, look in the description. It's gonna have some booking information. Legendary bus down. There it is. Bust down rock in the house, so put your ballads on. One more time. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, already. Hey, man, it's not easy podcast. Hey, man, Sice, Bust Down. Hey, man, we're up out of here. Yeah, man. Much love. Danny Houston. Subscribe to the Danny Houston podcast, man.